Happy people live longer, healthier lives. They're more successful in business, in career, in relationships, all across their lives. Why? Because happiness is your natural birthright. When you were born, there was nothing blocking your ability, your relationship to feeling and experiencing happiness. That's why I share with you the highest frequency is love and the next one is joy. See, when you are looking for how to be happy, it's because you've put all these blocks in the way. I can't tell you, you have to do this to be happy or you have to do that to be happy because the truth is what you have to do to be happy. To experience your birthright is you got to remove all the blocks standing between you and your happiness. Well, how can you do that? Well, since it's a path to get there, what I've done is created for you seven tips how to be happy now because what you got to do is create the habit of happiness. Notice I said the habit of happiness. A habit, it's a ritual. It's something you do naturally. And the way to start it, okay, number one thing on creating the habit of happiness, I, when I was a psychotherapist, I noticed it was obvious, you couldn't miss this. People who had emotional problems, who had psychological problems, they sat kind of hunched over, really cruddy, posture. Not only did that, but they tended to look down, talk quietly. So how do you remedy that? The very first thing you want to do to create the habit of happiness, because this is sending you instantly, instantly, within a matter of minutes that it takes you to do this, it's sending you instantly into feeling good, actually being happy. Now doing it once isn't going to keep you there because you want to make this a ritual. Then it becomes a way of life for you. It becomes your perspective looking out on life, how to live life. So the number one thing you have to start here and nothing will work is your posture. You want to sit tall or you want to stand tall. Well, what happens when you have really excellent posture? Your lungs have room to expand. The air you're breathing is your life force. So by being able to take in more air, you're right away feeling better. Now the next step is to tell yourself, and if you can speak it out loud, that will be optimal. And you want to use these words. I am choosing to feel happy now. I am choosing to feel happy now. Because it's a choice. And you haven't been living in a place where you've been choosing to live from and in a happy place. So instead of choosing to stay stuck or miserable or depressed or unhappy or unhealthy, choose and let your body and your brain and your mind know you are choosing to feel happy when? Now, right now. So say that to yourself for about 10 seconds. The next place you want to go is to smile. Inform your face, which will then inform your whole body.
to maintain the posture, to feel good. And smiling isn't just, it's your whole face. There's an eighth of an inch difference between a pretend smile. We all know somebody who does that, yes? And a genuine smile, because you smile with your mouth, you smile with your cheeks, you smile with your eyes. Truthfully, smile with your whole body. The posture, you add the smile to it, you will notice a shift in how you feel. Next place to go is choosing to feel happy. And then once your body, mind, spirit knows that you're choosing to feel happy, you want to retrieve. You want to retrieve a happy memory from your life. Yeah, you're really good at retrieving memories of what you don't want in your life. How about if you choose to retrieve a memory of what you do want more of in your life? So when, when I'm working with somebody and they have trouble coming up with a happy moment, I ask if they have children. And 99% of the time, not 100, but 99% of the time, they instantly retrieve a happy memory, a time when they feel good, felt good, because they were with their child or just thinking about their child. So you go back, you retrieve that happy memory. And then your body cannot tell the difference between what's real in the moment and what is made up. So when you're thinking about that happy memory, that happy moment that you lived, and you put all your senses into it. See it, feel it, touch it. Whatever senses were involved at the time when you relive that moment, Bob Allen called it virtualizing. Be inside your eyes looking out so you can take advantage of all your senses. And you do that. And your body not knowing how to differentiate between what's real and what's imagined will take you into that space. The next thing you want to do is create the habit of happiness. What's the habit of happiness? Well, when I had that first brain injury 26 years ago, I looked for the gifts and I started what I call the happy share movement. So every day in the morning, I have a morning ritual. And one of the things I do in that ritual is I list 10 things for which I feel happy and grateful in that moment. I list 10 things. If this is new for you, you might start out with one and then go to two and then go to three. What does that do? It switches what you're sorting for in the world. Because all these happy, wonderful events, all these great messages to take you and keep you in happy places, they're there all the time but you're not in the habit of focusing there because you're too busy focusing on what you don't want that you keep bringing back to your life because you're focusing on it. So whatever you look for in your world, you're gonna find it. So look for things that leave you feeling happy and grateful. And when the universe sees, oh, you're feeling happy and grateful. Oh, you're not sending out any messages that are contrary to happy and grateful. So the universe gives you back what you're putting out. It's going to fill your life with more things, more experiences for which to feel 
happy and grateful and you're going to find yourself smiling, smiling, smiling. You can go over to the happyshiremovement.com and list your one thing each day. Or you can also go on facebook.com, the Happy Share Movement, and list, if you're on Facebook anyway, it makes it easy to be doing that. Now the other thing that I do, anytime I feel any way other than happy, if something kind of wonky goes on in life, what I do is I immediately list off 10 things for which I feel happy and grateful in that moment. Well, what kind of 10 things? It could be, well, my vision's really clear. I can see easily, I can see comfortably. It can be, wow, the sun's out today, maybe the snow will melt. It can be, wow, I feel excellent today. My heart's working the way it's supposed to. It can be, oh, my good friend's coming to visit today. Or my grandchildren sent me some videos. Whatever comes, it doesn't have to be a deep emotional thing. It's something for which you feel happy and grateful because it's a very real part of your life now. Now what I've done is I created these seven tips on how to feel happy now because if you do those seven steps in the order in which I shared them with you, you will feel good. And if you're in a cruddy mood, you will feel good. So every time you catch yourself not feeling good, not smiling, go and list those 10 things just right off. You don't have to write them down. I recommend writing them and reading them aloud first thing in the morning, first thing, last thing at night. Why? First thing in the morning, you're setting your energy, what you want to bring in, what you're going to look for, what you're going to attract in the world. My yogurt's done. <laughs> and I feel happy and grateful my yogurt's done. Okay, so at night, before you go to sleep, if the last thing you do is list 10 things, Preferably, again, write them, read them aloud. That way you're involving more senses. You list those 10 things as you're getting ready to close your eyes for the night. You're setting your mind up for happy dreams, for a peaceful feeling, for excellent sleep. So first thing in the morning and last thing at night, that's other times for listing I feel happy and grateful for. And there's one thing I didn't put on the list. So I'm going to gift you number eight because I don't want to go redo the list right now because it's all ready for you to pick up and you'll find the link down below the video. I used to envy people who smiled all the time, genuine smiles, not, oh, I have to smile so I can think that I'm in good shape even when they're not. I'm talking about people with genuine smiles. And then it occurred to me, oh, I'm someone who smiles all the time when I choose to be someone who smiles all the time. And so I started bringing that into my awareness smiling all the time. And you know what happens? I can wake up in the morning, open my eyes and notice I'm smiling. I can be out anywhere. I can be humming. I can be singing and I'm smiling because it's a habit. And the coolest thing about smiling is when other people see you smile, Almost all of them smile back at you. I know I've lifted some people's moods because they were feeling really down. 
looking really depressed, really sad, really troubled. And I just smiled as I went by. And eventually as I approached them still smiling, they broke into a smile. And I honestly believe I changed how they felt because you're changing the feelings going on in your body. Thank you for joining me here today for our show, Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. I want to remind you to join our Facebook group and also you have an opportunity to join our community over at Patreon where you can participate in a live call with me each month and also get additional videos and posts that aren't available on the actual podcast. Remember to enjoy every moment that's capital I N, capital J, O, Y, because nothing happens outside of you. It all happens within. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Be sure you grab your gift of how to be happy now. And I will see you here next time.